Hey, everybody. So, Hi. How is it from Sydney, Australia? Yes, I'm here with Sandra San from Sandra D. Imagery. How are you doing, Sandra? Fabulous. Fabulous morning. Cool. Yeah, it's getting warm here in Los Angeles where I am at. So, Yeah, it's we're in be... summer in, in Sydney or in Australia. So uh, we're sitting in your temperature on some days in around about the 100, and that's sort of like mm, not so good. But, uh, you know, we're enjoying summer. And nice. uh, the light is quite harsh, but that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And here it's like a, it's, it's basically winter, but the, um, this week is going to be kind of a semi, not a heat wave week, but it's getting up there like 75 to 80 type of degrees. So, and uh, we got people coming in. So I want to say welcome. Oh, hello, Aussie, Sam Wilson. Fabulous. Yeah. There we go. Hello from fellow Aussie. Yeah. Ah, hi, just... Stefan. How are you? I should say g'day. It says, love Sandra's work. Stefan yep. says. Hannah, oh, good evening you. from Belgrade, Serbia. Oh, fantastic. I love looking at this, Andrew. And I think this yeah. is the fabulous thing about technology, just seeing where people come from. Absolutely. And just I'm a looking reminder. over here and just checking. Yep. And just a reminder, we are going to be asking the question, are you a photographer or a digital artist? Or the question, are you a digital artist or a photographer? <laughs> oh, this all will be revealed, Andrew. <laughs> I've got some interesting stories and conversations from my neck of the woods. Nice. We got uh, oh, see you. our city Perfect. cat from Michigan. Good to see you yeah. here. So. Salil says, hi, Sandra. Good to see you again. Yeah, fellow Aussie. Great. Yep. Let us know where you're watching from. Yep. I have We're to share. In. I haven't had my morning coffee yet, Andrew. So, uh -oh. you know, hold on a minute. I get a bit feral when I don't uh -oh. have the morning coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the drama, yeah, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta have a laugh. I think sometimes, you know, it can be a little bit serious. Gotta have a laugh. If I don't have a coffee, I get too feral. Yeah, right. So great. Yeah. So yeah. So once again, remember we're asking the question, are you a photographer, digital artist? So uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comments as well as let us know. Are you a photographer or digital artist? Yeah. And I think that's an interesting discussion, Andrew, because Got There's Marie. such a diverse thought about it, and I think it's a great topic to start with. Uh, particularly, I, I, I did a presentation for a camera club last night, um, and so that was quite interesting. Yep, both. Yep. Carol says she's both. Yep. Oh, hi, Carol. I know Carol. Yeah. Good to great. see you on here, Carol. Oh, Liverpool, UK. I've been there, Marie. Lovely little place. Yeah, Marie's also a uh, a moderator for the uh, the groups, so she's dedicated. And she's doing some wonderful photography lately. It's kind of branched out a bit more. Nice. Oh, uh, Gina. Yeah, there's. A... Yep, I Gina so says uh, love seeing your work evolve over the years. Yeah. Yeah, I know Gina. Yeah. Excellent. I right, well, I think it's about time. So uh, yeah. You know, once again, uh, let us know: Are you a photographer or digital artist? In the comments, let us know any questions you might have, and then um, I'm going to give it over to uh, Sandra to uh, introduce herself a little bit. There. Thanks, Andrew. Well, hi, it's Sandra from Sydney. That certainly rhymes. But for some of you, you might know my story. And for others, you may have not heard of me. Um, you know, short and sweet, uh, before COVID hit, I was a tour director traveling around Australia, but had a passion uh, for creating artwork. And so in these two years, I've actually been developing my skills and my style and just letting the creativeness happen. And when we were chatting to Andrew before, I said, when I left school, I wanted to be a window dresser, Andrew. Um, don't know nice. what they call it in these days. But I wasn't allowed into that profession because, dare I say it, in those days it was only for males. So um, I went into the office environment and life changes. 
You know, I've done interior styling certificate, love working with colour and started my photography journey as a landscape photographer in 2012 when I did what I call mature age working holiday. And so I photographed in beautiful Queenstown, New Zealand, not spoilt for choice, came back to Australia and look out world, Photoshop opened up my world with creativeness. So as I've been building up and I've been working on my business, Sandra D Imagery, uh, and my background is coming from an adult educator. So I love teaching, Andrew, and you do teaching as well. And uh, it's great to see people improve on their skills and get a passion. But uh, for me, my style, whimsical, colour, and it doesn't have to look real. And so that's a little bit about me. And I'll, you know, I'll share my thoughts about you know, what is a photographer or are you a digital artist? And and I'm really looking forward to some of the comments. Great. Excellent. So I guess I'll do a little intro myself. And, uh, so, yes, Andrew Cavanaugh, where is it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, as you many might know me, I've run uh, the various Facebook groups, Photoshop and Lightroom, Photoshop and Photography, Digital Art, the um, Strange and Surreal group, as well as a new group called Creatives Monetize. And yeah, for my living, I do uh, Photoshop and Lightroom tutoring and, uh, you know, for one-on-one -on -one and for uh, companies, small groups. And I also do photo editing. So I started in advertising in New York back in the 90s, doing photo compositing, retouching. Uh, let's see, anyone from Neutrogena to Ralph Lauren Polo Sport, Godiva Chocolate, Hewlett Packard, Revlon. Revlon was a big one, uh, with mm. one, my main advertising company. And then, you know, got into like web stuff when I moved to San Francisco with my wife. So did like uh, web design, some web design and production work, and then got in more into the tutoring and then freelance photo editing. And then I uh, also, like Sandra, love digital art. And so been creating digital art for a while. And I did go to uh, college for uh, fine arts. I was a printmaking major. So that was uh, interesting back in the days of the studio with all the uh, inks and chemicals. <laughs> and now it's all just computer, the magic of Photoshop. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so that's what I do as well. And, um, you know, we'll be showing a little bit of our work, but uh, we also want to want to hear your questions, everybody. So let us know. Exactly. So, you know, someone can start off. How about um, I'll start off with a little bit of a, a story, Andrew, of, of just, you know, what is a photographer and what is a digital artist? Well, no, let's hold on a minute, Andrew, because this is very informal. How about I ask you the question, what do you think is, you know, defines photographer and a digital artist? Right. I mean, I know a lot of people are kind of crossing over these days, but, um, you know, there's a lot of people who started in the, in the studio um, developing their, their photographs and then it moved into the digital world. And, um, a lot of people have embraced like the mirrorless cameras and, and that type of, uh, digital photography. Um, but a lot of people are also, as I see in these groups that I run doing a lot of composite work. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of purists and then there's people who are flexible about, you know, doing composite to bring elements into their photographs. And, um, so I see a kind of a crossover of the two worlds, but I do think that, you know, the type of work that you and me do, um, direct digital art is like a compositing and we're creating a certain vibe and mood as opposed to placing a figure into a photograph. So I think both of us, we have a kind of a vision and, um, yeah, so there's some, some good comments coming already. So yeah, Jerry and I've says, been just you know looking at it. Some are digital artists, and and I agree um, very much. And I think for all of us, um, it's about having a vision. And I know when I first started in landscape photography, and I was what I call a serious landscape photographer, photographed in Italy, you know, Norway, the Northern Lights. You know, I travel, chase the light. But right. I started to look at things, and I think, well, the sky wasn't great thank goodness for Photoshop, and I do what I call the technical term, whacked in a sky, and then I started to, you know, whack in a tree and put in a tree and sure. and then it just unleashed from there. And I think for my style it's very much about having that vision and that whimsy 
And, you know, Andrew and I, we were talking about it that, you know, for me, I read a lot as a child. And so, you know, is it starting to come out now in what I want to create? Sure. Um, but I had a, a, an interesting conversation last night when I, I create my own textures from my own photos. And so someone said, but that's not photography. You're using paint brushes and you're doing all of this. And I thought, but I'm using my own photos. So for me, I'd probably call myself a photographer, digital artist, but I'm not frightened to go in and use other elements from Scott Library or Pixel Screen, all of those to get the vision and the story um, and how I was explaining. And I don't know uh, with our audience too, I'd love to hear some comments is that, you know, I have envisioned a, a quirky house that's rickety and, you know, all sort of rules, fairy story. Well, I'm not going to photograph that anywhere. Right. Now, Barbara, so says, uh, Barbara says, I made it. Digital art is a game. I primarily use my skills in the visual, virtual world of Second Life. Interesting. I was looking at that. Now, I'd like to hear a little bit more of that world of Second Life. That's quite an interesting uh, concept. Car City Cat says, you would have loved my late father's group in uh, – CT, and maybe that's Connecticut. Roadkill yeah. Press had litho etching and other presses. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I did all kinds of uh, printmaking. I, I um, loved etchings. I also did the stone lithographs where you had to grind that down. That was kind of a romantic uh, way of doing printmaking back in the day. I also did some of the the plates, the silver plates for lithography. Did silk screen. I did paper making. Um, I loved it all. It was great, and. Um, but a little messy, you know, and, and hard to get certain supplies at times. I was doing a lot of linoleum cuts and you would yep. put that on a hot plate. And sometimes it was hard to find linoleum. But yeah, and Car City says, yes, Connecticut. Yep. Great. Yep. And that, now it's interesting because I did art at school. So I did a lot of that stuff. And I remember uh, drawing something on some board, putting some glue and then putting sand on it. Um, and that was, you know, starting. And then I started to enjoy drawing and colouring. And for any of you that colour, I colour within the lines. Cannot handle colouring out of the lines, Andrew. I will have, you know, I say it, I'm OCD. It has to be coloured in the lines. Sweet. Um, okay, so there's a question for everybody. Do you colour yeah. in the lines or out of lines? <laughs> exactly. You know, you've got to add that little bit of down-to-earth, colour in the lines, sit on the plane, colouring book out. Um, but, Andrew, where, where do you get your vision from when you're creating an image? Because I think this is interesting. Um, would love to hear people how they get their vision because we're all different. Yes. For, well, for me, I um, it's kind of a mixture. There's, you know, I meditate every evening and in the evening sometimes I have a, an image that comes to me and then I'll kind of take notes, put it down, and then work on it the next morning. Um so I'll have kind of like, you know, images that come. And then also there's times where um, I might even start creating an idea that I have and then I listen to music. And as I listen to music, I like ambient type of music um, mm. that will trigger uh, a kind of mood and emotion. And then I might even switch my focus altogether and have a whole new idea. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, one is a vision. The other one is just kind of taking the, um, direction of the moment and usually music is my biggest influence yeah and you for your you have wonderful uh, images so for yeah, your vision so it, it's quite interesting and, and it's so great to be in with a group of like-minded people that are creatives because we can talk about what some people would deem as airy fairy um sort of thinking but for me the vision um because i started with landscapes I choose my background first on some images. And so when I choose the background, then I look at it and I'll go, well, what would work in there? So, for example, I might put a tree in and then I'll go, well, what can I put there? And then so it just pops in my head and I'll go, oh, well, I'll put in a car. Okay, well, what can sit in the car? A giraffe. Now, where does that idea come from? I, I'd hate to be psychoanalyzed, you know, they'll all read into those little things. But I'll put in a giraffe or a, or a cockatoo. Um, and then I start to look at it and go, 
well, what other things can I put in there? And, you know, and it just goes from there, Andrew, with my word association. But for me, it's just the thought pops into the head um, and it just works from there. But for my style, I like a very simple um, style. I don't like a lot of clutter. So I probably work on elements that are in the threes and the fives, even the sevens. I always do the odd. And I look for balance when I'm doing my composition, when I'm creating my artwork. Nice. And colour. Colour is really what about. But that And that becomes a challenge to me is there's times where I, I do get involved in a lot of images and kind of going into another world. And, but then I get concerned that is it too busy? And then there's other times where I have a very simple kind of vision that I execute and then I, you know, I'm done with that. I, so th I'm pretty good with knowing when to end an image when I'm done with an image. Well, there are times when I've, at, I've already worked into an image that's busy mm -hmm. and then it's hard to kind of simplify it after that. So I kind of go back and forth between images that can be complex and images that can be more simple. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, people who are watching, please let us know you know, how you like to create and how yeah. do you get your uh, ideas for your images? What because kind of that's vision? where I think we can learn from each other, Andrew, that, you know, someone comes up with a different process. Uh, Dave's actually just put up there, and I can uh, suggest if you really like to look at some composite and creative work, there's Photorealistic, Living the Photo, Artistic Life. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of great digital magazines where you can see a real good cross-section. Um, and someone someone says that the music is probably 50% of his vision. Oh, or that's her interesting. Vision. No, no, her or him. Yeah. And that reminds me to let people know that um, please give StreamYard permission if you're on Facebook to show your name and profile pics so we will be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. That's the little link under the live, StreamYard.com slash Facebook. And that's actually something about music um, that I just had a thought. Um, and that's what happens with creators. I think, Andrew, it pops into the head. You can't stop your brain from, from thinking. But I've created some of my images with a movie in mind. For example, Up. You know, I saw the movie Up and I just thought, oh, I want to put a house floating in clouds. And so that was an inspiration for me. Um, and that's where I think you just draw on, on different things. I've yeah. also done some... <laughs> I've just got a warp mind that's always active. Andrew, I love that. That's, I really think. Yeah, he, he, he does a lot of surreal imagery I like. So good to oh, see. Oh, I'm just looking at the graphic there. That's cool. Um, and so, yeah, speaking but, of themes, I, you know, like the movie Up will influence you. I tend to watch, you know, kind of mysteries and, um, I don't know, slightly sci fi or dark kind of yeah. shows on Netflix and uh, HBO. And, and I like the color grading of a lot of those uh, shows or movies. So that'll influence me to do, you know, similar color grading or try a different uh, combination yes. of colors. But yeah, the moodiness of some of that, I really love. And even sometimes if I feel the story isn't that strong, I just love the sensibility of the aesthetic and I'll watch a show or a movie all the way through sometimes to the, to the annoyance of my wife, but um, I'll watch it through so I can take in kind of the, the aesthetic of it. Yeah. Um, I also draw from feelings um, that uh, particularly in COVID, in lockdown, I mean, it's around the world, can't hide it, um, or, you know, whether you've been in a lockdown. So there was a couple of times there that I felt in a dark mood. And sure. so I told a story with innate objects and so one of it was one door shutting. The middle door was then a, a window looking out mm -hmm. at, a, at a, I think it was a chicken or a rooster I put in there. Um, so that vision was looking out and that's how we're viewing the world and looking out. And then okay. the third door was opening up. So it's the shut of the world, how we're viewing the world and then opening up. But sometimes people may not get that story. But that's my story drawn from feelings. Great. Shall we jump in and show you, show the people some of your work? People yeah. Like okay. Let's go, Andrew. Oh, we're, we're going in. Sandra D. Imagery. Nice. Yep. So I'm going to go over to a little bit of my creative portfolio. And I'm going to and jump to full screen so people can see a little bit larger too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks, Andrew. 
So this is just on a, a carousel. That on, I didn't like to press too many buttons and show things up, but this is one. I'll just come back. This is the one that I thought was a truck and uh, I put the giraffe in there. You know, then I've got my little house and I work with textures a lot. That one tells a story and I'll share that story. Um, and, again, I'm experimenting with elements. There's my up inspiration and I'm telling stories with textures and graphics. I like birds and clouds. Nice. This one represents balance and I felt that. The lovely cockatoo, an Australian bird, got to put that in. And there's another influence from up. This also now, represented. Have Sorry, you, Andrew. Have you thought of the idea of creating a book of these? It would be nice to see a book of these. Ah, interesting that you say that, Andrew. Hold that thought. Uh, this one here uh, is the cheeky birds. Again, this was when I was in lockdown. That's a and nice so color grading there, mine, too. Yeah, my work's probably a bit more illustrative and, and you know, childlike. And this is just some of the um, older stuff that I've done. And I've got some treescapes that I've done. I love photographing yeah, trees. Nice. And so this comes into a little bit more of just, you know, the landscape. This one here I won an award with. Um, my first award that I got a gold, so I was really happy Great. with that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, and again, to me, when you show these trees, there's a story there, particularly this one. To me, it's a survivor. Same with this one. It's gone now, but it is a survivor. And that's what I love about doing the trees or photographing the trees. And, you know, on my uh, website, Sandra D. Imagery, I've just put what I like is my favourite ones. So I've done just a collection there. Um, and I'll come back onto it, Andrew. It's just a collection of my favourites, um, but a lot of my portfolio stuff's on Instagram, um, and you know we certainly can uh, share that. But that's my yeah. kind of style, Andrew. If I can come back about doing a book, that's one of my goals is nice. to do yeah. an illustrative book and quotes. I'm very big on the quotes. Right. Um, and so that comes from my sporting days. But yeah, that's a little bit of who I am. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll, like. yeah, beautiful work. Really like, it. and maybe I'll jump and show a little uh, taste of my work. Yeah. So, um, let's see, add to stream. Yep. So that's first the uh, YouTube. So uh, this is my Behance, and so uh, you know I have my a section for digital art for learning uh, Photoshop and photography, uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, and Lightroom. And then I have my photo compositing. So this is some work that I did, say, for the Intel Developers Forum in San Francisco years ago. So these were large, very large banners. So this is kind of more my kind of client work, but mm. still kind of a form of digital art. And um, so these were very large banners that would be on the side of like the building or inside the, the walkways for this Intel Developers Forum. Uh -huh. And then this would be like a large wall kind of compos composite that they had up. And here's kind of like a mock-up showing it inside the uh, the, the uh, center that they had it. And then I've done some uh, stuff for like Herbalife and some social awareness and then Hewlett Packard. And here's one from Revlon, um, Absolute Webby. It was like the back cover. But then there's also, you know, my digital art. So a lot of my digital art um, it's kind of more like the dream visions. Um, mm, I like that one, Andrew. That's that's really cool. Yeah, it's a, a recent one. And then this was kind of a, an image, a vision I had um, where, you know, it, it's dark and it has that darkness, but there was also kind of the, the hope or the, the glimmer of hope with the, uh, the universe in the skull. I want it to be kind of colorful and not just purely dark. And then uh, this is another one, uh, Hidden Realms, where I had this image of... Uh, you know, I, I'm very intrigued by the sea and the sea and its textures. So I use that as a way to suggest another world. Mm. Um, so I love that, the kind of textures of that. And doing the color grading in Photoshop as well, of course. And then here's a one that I did recently. So already 2022 has been a nice creative year. And then on my behance, you can just see some of the previous um, lives that I've done and other you know, I think this is a slideshow video of 
some of the work that I did uh, last year. I don't want to necessarily click on that, but um, yeah, I know some, my work kind of jumps from kind of a dark or mysterious zone and then back to kind of some lighter feels with maybe a little mm -hmm. bit of darkness on the bottom left. <laughs> um, there. Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, right. A little, ha little haunting image. And then, yeah. um, you know, strange dream. So kind of movement of uh, elements. And then this one uh, I did, uh, I believe it was the end of last year or beginning of this year. Um, a lot of people seem to really like. So this is a composite and playing with color grading and the whole feel of becoming water and the flow mm. of it. Just kind of, you know, when I create, it's sort of like I like to get into the zone and kind of, um, you know, have it be a form of meditation. And I, I want the viewer to get that feeling too. So, yeah, and this was another one I did. Uh, and there's some great comments. Thanks, everyone, for acknowledging the work. It's really nice when you get, as I said, creative people coming in and yeah. can look at it for what it is. Yeah, I'm a fan of um, of Behance. So, yeah, I've only just started Joe dabbling Park. in that. Is is anyone else on Behance? Because if you are, let us know because I, I'm starting to you know get a little bit more um, in that. But some fantastic uh, comments on uh, your work there, Andrew, and thank you for those. And you too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and we promise that we won't just showcase our work during this no, no. talk. We'll have, we'll probably have guests as time goes and showcase their work too. Um, uh, and Andrew, I'm just going to share a comment there, and 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 this is where I said it's very informal. Uh, Carol has got uh, love the way your brain works, um, and she made a comment on one of my classes, and I thought, oh, I think if I went in for psychoanalysts, they they throw me away because they couldn't work out how my brain works. It jumps all over the place, you know, and gets sure. uh, different different things. Well, and here, here's a a great question uh do you both use stock images more or less than your own yeah. photography so sandra yeah this is where i'd like to lead in uh because i still go out and shoot with the camera but i sh i photograph now for elements so you know whereas i was photographing for landscapes and i still might do that i still love getting out there in the landscape but my eye now is starting to get attuned to looking at photographing letterboxes. Um, you know, who would have thought I would have photographed crows sitting on the front lawn? Um, I've actually bought a bird's nest off, I didn't think you could, but online and I'll photograph that. And so I'll put that into a composite somewhere. So I still use the majority of my photos, both the landscapes and the elements, the trees, all sorts of things that I've photographed over the years. But I don't see any problem if I have an idea and I don't have that in my stock library that I'll go to Pixel Squid. I, I don't tend to go into some of the stock libraries much. I tend to work more with mine and Pixel Squid. But, you know, I always had that theory, you never say never. So am I a digital artist or a photographer? I, I would sort of say I'm a photographer and a digital artist and I combine the mediums. Nice. And, you know, I've, I've been sort of, and Andrew, we were talking about this, I've been challenged at camera clubs because I present at camera clubs and I do uh, judging um, or critiquing of images. And I've been challenged to say you're not a photographer and... And I find that frustrating because I am still using a camera. It's my tool, but I'm creating art. And, you know, I don't know for, for other people, but I respect someone that uh, is doing landscapes or, you know, Andrew, if someone was doing a bit more of a gothic, uh, you know, style, I look at that skill and admire that it doesn't sometimes speak to me but I admire that. So I get frustrated when people say to me, but you're not a photographer. Well, I'm not documenting reality. And so that's where I think as a, as a creative, um, you know, we, we look at it and we create artwork and that's what speaks to our soul. So, you know, um, I don't know for others, but to me I, I think, you know, well, let's embrace whatever we do because it speaks to us. So that probably sounds a little bit of a, hmm, but I, I feel passionate about that. Nice. Yeah. I mean, 
And then for me, it's, um, you know, I've done photography where I've, I've taken a lot of photographs of anything from like mannequins and, you know, sidewalks and textures and what thing, what not mm-hmm. for the, my comp- composites, my uh, mm. digital art, but I also am open to utilizing uh, images from sites such as Unsplash and Pexels.com. So I will, you know, a lot of times I'll have elements for textures and backgrounds and whatnot that I've taken, but certain style of, of portrait or character um, I don't have. So I will reach out and mm. find images from those type of stock sites. Mm. Um, I see that's. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just looking at. Attending a few center of workshops yeah, to uh, photograph yeah. elements. I'm no way a design artist, just a different way I use my camera now. Yeah. So that's good. They learned from. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's where you grow. That, um, you know, you'll you'll find or try different things. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to photograph a teapot next week, Andrew. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. But anyway, um, and nice then just thing. looking there, do you both use stock images more or less for your own photography? I mean, yeah, that was the uh, original yeah. Yeah, question, yeah. Yeah. So um, and then the other thing that I that I look at is too is, you know, getting, in, getting inspiration from other work, art, books, movies, um, anything, you know, particularly what you were talking about, Andrew, with the colour grading. So for me, colour is very important in that one with the giraffe and, uh, you know, the tree. That comes from me doing colour theory with interior styling. And I think, you know, and I'd love to hear from other creatives, is rules are there for certain reasons, but rules are also there to be broken and experiment, particularly when you're being creative, you know. Um, And one of the things that I said last night is that, you know, for me I've gone into competition and I'll work by the rules. But when I'm creating an image for myself, I don't like to work in the rules because that stifles creativity. So that comes into photographer and a digital artist and, you know, doing those different things. Um, So, you know, a few more questions in there or comments or challenge. I like a challenge too. Um, You know, it's some different thinking. I mean, for me, I went to, uh, you know, college for fine art and we also studied art history and, I really loved um, having to study all the different artists and the different kind of periods. Mm. Um, And I, myself, being a printmaking major, loved a lot of the German expressionist uh, printmakers. And um, one thing that was great is I went to school in Boston where the School of the Museum of Fine Arts was connected to the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. And one of my favorite uh, memories ever was being able to sign up or schedule a visit to the Museum of Fine Arts Boston where I could go into their print division and you'd have to put on white gloves, but you could hold original Picasso and and, uh, Edvard Munch. Fabulous. um, Yeah. So, and yeah, Picasso, Edvard Munch, uh, Albrecht Durer, Rembrandt. So I got to hold like original Rembrandt etchings um, and study them that way. That was quite nice. That was a blessing to have. So. Um, and then Andrew Nichols says he's self-taught and learning yep. along the way. Nice. And, and and that's great, Andrew, because that's how we find out how we work as a creative. And then when you start getting into it, then you start exploring. Um, and then there's uh, the Car City Cat, um, you know, how do you sell your work? Um, and, you know, that's what I call the $6 million question. Um, you've got to find your niche, I think, and and work out. So for me... That's where I'm going for illustrative and looking at a book, try and get something um, commercial. Um, yeah, but coming back, people, yeah, sorry, Andrew, I cut you off then. No, I was just say, uh, hopefully people find your your website from seeing your work online and then reach out and, you know, mm. ask about uh, buying one of your pieces, you know, so. And I'm, I'm for me, for artists, um, I like Monet, Van Gogh. Um, I like the colour palettes, um, the Impressionists. That's sort of where I drew a lot of my colour. Um, and there was also a, a painter, an Australian Aboriginal, 
by the name of Albert Namajira. And if anyone looks up his work, Albert Namajira, um, and I might post up in one of the groups and give a link out there if that's all right, Andrew. Sure. He, he broke away from traditional Aboriginal artwork and went into watercolour. Mm. And so his watercolours are just absolutely stunning. He learnt, I think, from, uh, and his period of time was 1950s, around about there. Um, and I draw, draw a lot of inspiration from that as well. Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that's great about these, you know, social networks we're on is just by posting your work, I have had people see my work and then buy my work. So that's nice. Um, mm. Though Facebook doesn't let you post links to a lot of the, uh, you, you know, with your artwork. So sometimes they will squash the viewership, which is a bit frustrating, but um you know, it's good to showcase like, you know, in the groups, I will tend to do like an Instagram share post and then people will share their, their links and follow each other. And mm -hmm. that's a great way for people to kind of support each other and see the different uh, body of work that everyone does. You know, there's such di diversity of styles. Um, and exactly. that's, that's probably my favorite thing about the groups. So running these groups for more than like 11 years now, my favorite thing is the diversity of styles and you know, someone can be really great at very surreal imagery and some can be really good at very beautiful, realistic family portraits, you know, mm. and I, I appreciate the whole range. So that's one thing I really like about these groups. It, um, exactly. And I, I don't photograph people or anything with two legs that walk. Um, um, you know, I, I just, I tried some model shoots, Andrew, and I went, right. that's a world of its own. I can't deal with that one. Um, but I admire there's some beautiful work that's coming up um, with, you know, people and the colour and just the way they do the retouching is just stunning. But I'd like to put a little bit of let's get some interaction here, uh, Andrew. I'm going to say label yourself and say photographer, digital artist or both. Or yeah, let's let's see some comments here. Don't be shy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the count, Andrew. I'm going to see how many we've we've, we've got. So come but on, what, get one, in there. But one thing I would say that um, these different platforms are starting to support more, which is great, is the whole NFT uh, craze or you know trend that is happening. So I, I've noticed that there is on the Behance site a way that you can link to your NFT gallery, and then I've seen. Uh, mention on Twitter that you can change your profile and kind of link to your NFTs. Um, I believe even uh, YouTube is talking about that. And, uh, you know, Facebook, they, they're even talking about their own cryptocurrency, which I'm not sure um, mm. how well that's doing. But, you know, it does Instagram seem... too, I believe. Beyonce too has got that sort of coming up. Yeah. Or we've so got we have some, both. Carol right? saying she does both. Yeah. Andrew Nichols, photographic artist. Yeah. Oh, I like that one, Andrew. Yeah. Car City Cat. Both ish. Uh, both ish. Salil does a uh, photographer trying to re rediscover my mojo after four year hiatus. Uh, and that's a really good point. I think we Marie all Marie is that. doing a uh, photographer, but love art and would love to, would like to become more creative. Oh, great. Yeah, photography is quite great. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to look that up, Marie, and check out some of your work. Yeah. In fact, that. in fact, uh, I've seen a great body of her work recently and um, asked her to be featured in my Photoshop and photography newsletter, which comes out every Tuesday. So in the next right. month or so, she will be featured. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Both. This is both. Ooh. This is, I like this. This is interesting where people, you know, can talk about that and say, well, oh, yeah, I sit in this area and, and that. No, I one thing I did that was uh, interesting is, you know, I had been doing the montages, the digital art, and then I got this idea that I should try to embrace photography more. So I was going out and doing a lot more photography um, years back. And I think I did it for like one year and I just felt like I really missed focusing on the digital art, the montage work. So um, now I, I try to do both when possible, but um I'm I'm much more into the digital art, therefore the digital artists talk. So, <laughs> exactly. And 
you know, for some people, Andrew, montage. What do you mean by montage? Uh, well, kind of like the work that both of us do is what some people would uh, describe that type of digital art. So a montage is like a photo montage where you're, you're, you're kind of uh, placing and blending different um, photo elements. So mm -hmm. it's, it's also been described as photo montage as well as digital art. And Steve says it, both. Yeah. It's good to see you here, Steve. And that's interesting, Andrew, and I'll just come into one of the points while I'm, we're just looking at who's, you know, photographer, digital artist, um, is that some stage we all lose our mojo. And, you know, there's different strategies that, you know, I'm, I'm sure, Andrew, you work on, I work on when I lose the mojo. Um, I'm not one that can create an image every day, but the brain's thinking. But in January, what I did um, was every day I had to be creative. And it didn't mean that I had to create an image. It may have been look at other people's work or, you know, learn something, but as long as it was creative and that fired up my brain cells to get it thinking. Was that a, a New Year's resolution? No. It, it just it, happened in January. It just happened. And I'll tell you why, because I know the longer I leave it, the harder it gets to create for me personally. Yeah. Um, I don't know about others. Okay, we've got, we've got a few both. So I think some people may be a little bit quiet there sitting on the fence uh, and saying that what they are. But, yeah, it just came about that way. Um, and I have a visual diary. Do you have a visual diary, Andrew, where you mm. write ideas and draw and those it's kind more of like, things? It's more like notes. I put down uh, different ideas and then I just try to jump right in to execute them. Yeah. Um, well, one thing, one thing that I, I do with my imagery I'm not sure if this happens to you, but um, one thing that I really like doing is sometimes I'll have an idea, I'll execute it, and in the midst of it, as I add new elements, I might completely go a different direction. And I love, I love the idea of being able to abandon the original idea for something I think is better, more expressive in the moment. So, oh uh, yes, I can relate to forty layers down the track, and then going, "Yep, it ain't working," or. Right where I first started, and then I go, oh, let's throw in a cloud, a bird. Oh, hold on a minute. Uh, you know, let's look in a stock library and what I've got. Um, right. And I th I think that's, for me, comes into that photographer's side is that so many images that I photographed, but I'm using them now to create textures, you know, use them for sky. But the drive for me to get out with the camera now is waning a little bit. And so I've, I've got to kickstart myself and go, you know, I need to get out and photograph elements and do some different things. But I'm enjoying the digital art, the artwork side of creating something. Right. And, and that speaks to my soul. Um, right. and, and I think too, I think you, you still got to have that passion and love for creating a, a piece, an artwork, a photo, You've just got to do it for yourself if that's what you enjoy. Um, yeah, I'm, so. I'm pretty d disciplined about like treating my evenings as, you know, it's entertainment, but it's really studying for me too. So mm -hmm. by watching these shows and these movies um, that have a certain aesthetic that I love, it's a way to kind of study and get ideas for comp composites. Um, yep. And so, you know, it's, I don't like to be diverted in the evenings to do like just, you know, like a photo editing job when I really mm. like to be studying these uh, cine, cinematograph, I don't know how you say it. Oh, it's one of those words. Yeah. Type Cinematography. Of, um, aesthetic um, yeah. that I can bring into my work. I'm not a filmmaker, so I can't say it right. But, uh, <laughs> but the idea that like I'm taking it in so I can uh, utilize that for my digital art. I love that. And um, yeah. You know, I consider my evenings kind of sacred in that sense. It's it's not like I'm not just letting off steam or anything. It's it's study time. So, And that's an interesting point that comes in. I'm more creative at night than what I am during the day. That's mm. when I come alive or want to create. Um, I'd, I'd be interested in, in other people. 
But I think there's some, you know, what they think. There's some really good comments in there. And I, I think, Andrew, wasn't it, that we wanted to sort of do some different topics and, you know, yeah, be I mean, diverse people yep. and get thinking. Yeah, I'd like to get, you know, more kind of interactivity with the attendees. So, you know, I guess we'll have to work on different questions that pique your interest more. But um, yeah. yep. we'll, we'll work on it. You know, this is the yep. first one, so it's, it's a great, great start, I think. And uh, it's great to see so many familiar friends and really appreciate people being here. So yeah, exactly. maybe, I'll, yep. maybe I'll take that as a, uh, a, a detour into uh, going over where we can be found and then uh, wrap this one up. But um, so, yep. yeah, for Sandra, you can find her at sandradimagery.com. Yeah, thank you. And then, of course, on Instagram. So Instagram.com, Sandra D. Imagery. And then um, I'm going to be having a mixture of these digital artist talk and then Photoshop and photography talk, as well as the live video events through the Facebook groups uh, with different people in the Photoshop and photography industry. And um, so, therefore, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe for my digital art. I do uh, different slideshows, presentations, tutorials, Photoshop and photography, focused live streams and tutorials. YouTube, search for digital artist Andrew Kavanaugh. Thank you. And as I showed you before, my behance.net is uh, Drew Cav. Thanks, and, Andrew. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember, you know, what the address would be for my um, Instagram. But I think if you just do a search for digital artist Andrew Kavanaugh, you'll find me. And yep. we have comments and coming in. So yeah. uh, Barb says, I find visiting the artistic artistic builds of other creators in the virtual environment inspiration to create more. Yeah, it's great to see others work. I agree with that. Uh, excellent. Yep. Andrew says he's going to explore Sandra's channels. Thanks nice. very much, Andrew. Uh, regarding NFT, uh, Car City Cat says, regarding NFT crypto artists, they are some are making millions. It's mm. Is that rare? Or do you think growing and opening up to opening up to open opportunities for artists to be successful. I think it's a mix. Um, my, my interest is uh, to find get on lights, online galleries that will, can um, represent you without um, large fees in the beginning. I'd rather mm -hmm. give a commission when I sell my work than like pay a certain amount. And then this online gal, it doesn't do well. And then the online gallery is just kind of profiting and I'm not. Um, so I'm kind of looking into that. But yeah, I, I do think it's growing and I think it's getting bigger. So mm. anyone who thinks it's a fad and it's it's over, no. It's it's just begun and it's going to be more and more established. The thing is, though, you do have to do your research and realize there are some very established online galleries or companies that represent your work. And there are scammers. So watch exactly. out for the scammers. I think it's and watch then, this space, Andrew, on that. And then uh, Marie says, thank you both. Inspiring. Looking forward to seeing you again. So Thanks, yes, Marie. we yeah. try to do this. We'll try to do this every Wednesday, everybody. So keep an eye out. Now we'll be posting in the groups to remind people. So uh, thanks everyone. Just for, an informal chat. Yeah, and an informal yeah. chat and we'll come up yes. with different topics. And then in time, I'd like to have some guests who we can also showcase their digital art and, mm. you know, we can share that with everybody. So thanks everyone for being here. Appreciate Thank it. You. Yep. And, See you uh, later. Carol yeah, says thanks, thanks very Stan. much. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Have a great one.